What is the strangest unsolved mystery? The 169th victim of the Oklahoma City bombing. They found an additional leg in the rubble. DNA tests showed it belonged to another victim who had already been buried but with the wrong leg. The wrong leg had already been embalmed, so they could not get DNA at the time. So who did this leg belong to? All other legs had been accounted for in other victims. They found no other body parts, and nobody else had been reported missing. It was only until 2015 they could get DNA from the leg, but it's still classified as a John Doe. A few conspiracy theories had pop up like maybe a second bomber that got caught in the blast but it's still unknown. My bet would be a transient slash homeless person. I've worked as security at a large federal building and it's common for them to come in to check on IRS slash SSA or just to use the bathroom slash food court. I'm sure that was it. I've worked in all kinds of places from stores to restaurants to office buildings, and there's always homeless people in them because sometimes they just, want to be inside for a few minutes. That guy who ran away from the airport hopped the fence and was never seen again. That surveillance video was so chilling to see. The way he just casually walked in the airport like nothing and suddenly ran off unexpectedly. I wonder what causes people to just randomly do something unexpectedly like that. He had suffered a head injury from a fight. Could well have experienced a psychotic episode triggered from what happened in the fight. Asha Degree. Lived in my town frown in 2000. She walked out of her home willingly at age 9 in the middle of the night on Valentine's Day during a massive storm. She was sighted multiple times walking down an extremely rural and desolate highway by herself in the pouring rain and then was never seen again. Her book bag was discovered miles away buried in a trash bag a year later. How was a 9-year-old convinced to leave her home alone in the middle of the night? in a storm, to walk down a deserted highway. How has there been no substantive leads at all since 2001? Did anyone who saw her walking by herself in the middle of the night stop to talk to her or at least report it to the police? Irk, one person did stop and when they stopped she ran off into the woods. A bunch of her stuff was found in a shed right into the woods showing she was hiding out there for a little bit. That person did report it to police and that's how they were able to know where on the road she was last seen. On December 4, 1872, a British-American ship called the Mary Celeste was found empty and drifting in the Atlantic. It was found to be seaworthy and with its cargo intact, except for a lifeboat, which it appeared had been boarded in an orderly fashion. No one knows what happened to the crew or why they left the ship. Remember the plausible theory about the crew discovering a leak of fumes from the alcoholic spirits being stored in the hold, fearing risk of explosion. They may have piled into the lifeboat temporarily and moved a distance from the ship, hoping it would air out only to drift away from the ship in the fog and possibly die of drowning or dehydration later. What happened to Ireland's most beloved racehorse Shergar? It's widely believed the IRA kidnapped him for ransom and ended up shooting him to death as he got too much to deal with. However, even long after ending their campaign the IRA has been admitting to the kidnappings and killings of several people, especially in relation to the disappeared, but haven't mentioned Shergar once. Surely they would have come out and claimed responsibility by now if they were behind it? I dunno, if the specific people who did it never said anything then it would never be claimed, even if they were working under orders from the IRA at the time. Just because they claimed some stuff doesn't mean they claimed everything. And considering how people feel about animal abuse, I wouldn't blame them for wanting to keep it quiet. I don't know if this has been posted already or not. 1986 Missing Boy of Soma Sierra, Juan Pedro Martinez Kid's father is a truck driver. He is tasked with taking a semi carrying a tank of sulfuric acid from Cartagena to Bilbao, and brings his wife and son to make it a little family trip. When they pass through the Soma Sierra mountain pass, the truck is reported as driving erratically, and then it crashes. The cabin is destroyed, both parents are killed in the crash, but Kid apparently just fucking vanishes off the face of the earth. The obvious explanation is he somehow survived the crash and wandered off, but the area was thoroughly searched, and no trace of him was found. Some have theorized that the sulfuric acid dissolved his body. This wouldn't work either, because it would take longer than that to dissolve a body, and because it would have left traces. There are a few unexplained and unusual details as well. Andres was apparently a decent driver and in good health, and there was nothing wrong with the truck. Why was he driving so badly, especially through mountains with steep cliffs, with his whole family on board? The truck's tachometer recorded a number of unexplained starts and stops that didn't match the traffic patterns. What's that about? There were traces of cocaine found, not in the cabin, but inside the tank with the sulfuric acid. Why? Unverified reports claim that two people arrived at the scene before emergency services and removed a small package from the cabin. 
Is this true, and if so, who are they, and what are they doing? Almost a year later, in 1987, a boy matching Juan Pedro's description was reported in Madrid. He was accompanying an elderly woman, and they were asking about the location of the U.S. Embassy. Was this Juan Pedro, and if so, who is he with, and why? The tame and shoot murder is so beyond bizarre, they think he was poisoned, but they don't know with what. They don't know who the guy was because he had no ID on him and all his clothes had the tags ripped off. Then there's the brown suitcase, the fact that he was seen alive, I think, a full day earlier in the same spot they found his body, oh in the strange number code they don't understand. They generally think it has to do with some hardcore Cold War spy shit, but who knows. The stone spheres of Costa Rica. Basically huge huge spheres that no one has any fucking clue who put them there or, perhaps more importantly, how. The Phoenix Lights. I'm not a big UFO nut but this is just fucking creepy. Thousands of people, including the governor, saw them. The governor, if memory serves was a pilot, and when the government came out with their report, flares, after that some type of plane, the governor, once out of office of course, called bullshit. No real explanation. The Kitty Murders. In 1981 Glenna Sharp, her son John 15, his friend Dana, 17, were found beyond brutally murdered by Glenna's eldest daughter Sheila, she found them, not murdered them. They had been staying in cabin 28 in the Ketty Resort. Sheila had stayed with her friends in cabin 27 and found the bodies in the morning. Her sister, Tina 12 was missing and her remains were later found some 28 miles away after an anonymous tip was called in. The twist here is that in cabin 28 there were also three small children found alive and unharmed in their bedroom. Most people on Reddit have probably heard about it, but Oak Island, also known as the Money Pit is a pretty big mystery. In 1795, Daniel McGuinness, of Nova Scotia, saw lights coming from the uninhabited Oak Island, named because, well, it's full of oak trees. He and some friends went to the island and found a large circular depression. So, they started digging and discovered a layer of flagstones a few feet below. On the pit walls there were visible markings from a pick. As they dug down they discovered layers of logs at about every 10 feet. They gave up at 30 feet. That's just the beginning. The Onslow company picked up where McGinnis and his friends left off, reaching a depth of 90 feet finding layers of logs every 10 feet and layers of charcoal, putty and coconut fiber at 40, 50 and 60 feet. It should be noted that coconuts and thus their fibers aren't native to anywhere near Nova Scotia. Somewhere between 80 and 90 feet they found a coated rock that was translated saying something like 40 feet down, 2 million pounds lie buried. This is getting long so I'll tl, dr it, the pit floods. And not like a, oh we'll just pump out the water flood. The water comes in from three parts of the island with the tide. Many many people and companies have tried to reach the bottom, but with no success. The location The location of Heinrich Müller, the final Gestapo chief. He was last seen in Berlin, roughly three days before it fell. At the time, he claimed to be fully aware of what the Russians did to Pals and that he had no intention of being taken prisoner. He most likely had access to foreign documents as the Gestapo leader and knew how to duplicate them. He was sought after by the CIA and the KGB, but nothing of him has ever been discovered. A few people went missing towards the end of the war, a very boring but realistic theory is that he was just a plain-clothed war causality who was buried hastily and anonymously, or was killed by the Soviets. Hitler's cook also vanished in similar circumstances and her body was never discovered. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.